Okay, so here we are for the uh, next installment on our uh, kind of chronicle build here of this car from start to finish. So uh, we've got a little farther along. We did our intro series the other day. So we've got the uh, we've got the cab of the car up. We've got the funny car cage in it. We've got the four link brackets on it. Um, we're not going to go into a bunch of detail about the chassis build on this because we've already done the extensive video on uh, the how to's of putting the chassis together. So as we get to some of the more uh, critical parts in the car. We're going to spend some time on that, but this is just an update on the progress. So um, we're moving along pretty good. We're, um, we're we're getting ready to start on the back uh, tail section of the car. So we'll uh, tomorrow we'll we'll set up some fixturing, some jigs, and we'll we'll do the tail section in the back tubing, all the all the stuff in the rear, and then we'll uh, we'll move to the front. But here's a few short clips from that tutorial video to give you an idea how the chassis kits go together before we move on to mounting accessories and uh, engine and transmission in this car. And it will notch that tube to that cutter diameter. So this is really nice. We have three of these. Uh... So what's most common is obviously there's a hand grinder, which any, uh, any four and a half inch uh, uh, blade hand grinder will work. Another piece that works really good is just a uh, a heavy duty die grinder with a, um, this is a uh, inch and a half sanding roll in it. This frame rail length needs to change with the wheelbase change. So for instance, if you were building um, this car at 112 inches, you wouldn't want this frame rail quite as long. First thing we're gonna do after the floor is finished is we're gonna erect the main hoop. Now, some of them are lean back. It, it depends on the shape of the car and how the main hoop fits the uh, window area of the body and how it gives the driver more headroom. And it'll be the same um, parts that we use in the shop. So if you have to call up and get any help with anything, it's not like you're using a, uh, a generic kit that doesn't fit good. We've got a roof diagonal in. Uh, we've got these, uh, the gussets on the corners of the windshield pipe and at the front and the back. Coloration in the weld is important. So. Chrome Molly has a lot of different contents in the in the base metal of the material and when you weld it with a mild steel rod this coloration is good okay the weld should be shiny and kind of have like a little bit of a rainbow color to it it should have some gold and purple and blue in it okay, so we'll adjust these tubes around and spread them out and and fit them to the seat um, according to whatever seat package we're putting in the car. You want to think about all the uh, tube placement in these cars is that um, you know, you've got to cover it later with some kind of a panel or, or a floor. Partially on the four link bracket and on the tube also so they're kind of corner fit and that that corner fit allows it to also gusset the top of the bracket so and, and we do that a lot in um, on all the tubes in the car. That gussets this corner so now this joint here is much stronger and you can see this tube is the same way. It would be really easy to fit this tube to here or, or to the rear cross member and then just weld it around there. But then you leave this main hoop kind of exposed to just the one joint at the bottom. While we're in this view here, we can see that uh, we've got the wishbone tabs tacked on here. And uh, they're on a little bit of an angle. Once you get these located, they're actually cut to this radius so that they lay in this um, this bent area of this rear frame rail. This is one of the few little tricks that, that I'd like to point out. Either use the tab or the uh, cup and mount it on top of the strut, and then you'll have this, this location so that when you're um, uh, applying the brakes and that, that the, that the control arm has actually got um, a, a good angle to push into the chassis. You don't really want to put it straight so that it's trying to bend it back. You want to get it back behind that axle center line. Those will get capped and welded uh, 360 degrees around and that way they're, that's all finished off and supported properly from the end. Getting pretty close to wrapping this thing up. Like I said, we're on day seven so um, if you guys are badass chassis builders by seven days you should be able to have this thing together just like this. At this point we have all of the structure of the chassis done, so we're ready to start accessorizing this. Um, so what I'm going to take you through over the next couple of weeks here is fuel cell mount, fuel pump mounting, all the accessories up front, detailed engine mounting, transmission, um, all the accessories inside, the, the seat, uh, the head surround, the pedals, the steering column, all of the small uh, bottle mounts, nitrous bottle mounts, shifter mount, parachute handle, switch box. 
we're going to kind of work our way from front to back and we'll spend a little time on each one of those components and try to give you a, an idea of how we mount it and, and some tips that will maybe help you when you're doing it yourself.